What's good, Gooners? Arsenal beat Southampton 2 0. And that's something. Look, I'm going to put my hands on the table because you guys know I'm an honest man of my word. I'm humble. But before we go into that, hit the subscribe button if you're not subscribed to this channel already. And hit that like button because if you hit the like button, then my video gets shared all around the world in the YouTube. So listen, let's talk about the game. So first off the bat, you guys know I went for a Man City draw, a Brighton draw, and I went for a Southampton loss. So by this point after the first two games, my prediction was that we were going to have two points. So yes, the first two games was disappointing because it's, it was disappointing as I explained on last night's podcast because the tightness and the shape of the team and the commitment to working hard off the ball we just didn't see that and a lot of the reasons why we failed as well is because obviously the first goal that Lacazette when he didn't come in on in Brighton and close that corner down that's something that we know that Nketiah does and Nketiah did that today again defensively he closed down the midfield and won the ball back a few times and that's just something that he does he innately does it it's part of his game he went to Leeds on loan and he adhered to their man-to-man -man marking system Remember in the first half when Leeds played us at the Emirates in the Carabao Cup? Remember that? Leeds played us off the park in the first half. We couldn't live with them because of the type of system that they play. So Nketiah has had that training and the younger players can be groomed and groomed and they can deliver on what you're asking them to do. And a lot of the veterans are letting the team down because they're just missing assignments poor positioning again against Brighton we saw Mustafi's positioning very poor for the winning goal but what we saw today was a little bit of a it was kind of mirrored in the Brighton game but we didn't make the mistakes that was the real difference uh, between this and the Brighton game kind of really the same game you know in in the early parts of Brighton we hit the crossbar with Saka what happens in this game Abamian hits the crossbar so it was almost a mirror image of how we started dominating the game but we didn't sort of really make use of that type of domination second half we sort of got overrun a little we couldn't keep possession this is the thing about Xhaka people talk about he's a great passer he's composed on the ball and well if he is then why is our midfield in the second half unable to string three passes together you know silly little things like that you can't tell me that this guy is doing his job and he he creates holes and you know how many chances does he create today you know Kieran Turney hit a lovely floated ball perfectly weighted for Abamian should have scored another one with Saka perfectly weighted pass should have scored we should have got a goal like that and even Martinez the goalkeeper hits one 60 yards creates a one-on-one -on -one, should have done better with that these are the balls that Xhaka are supposed to be playing but yet most of the fans keep saying, yeah, that's what he's good at, that's what he's good at. But no chances created. No, ass where's assists? I can't see any assists. <laughs> Guys, look, I'm done with that. But let me give you my marks out of 10 for each player now. So I'm going to go with Martinez gets a 7 for me. Good distribution. Was pressured constantly by Southampton on the back end and forced him really to kick it long and the kicking long we don't that's not really our game we don't really have the guys who can hold the ball up really well and a few times he just kicked it out of bounds just to give himself a breather because the ball was just coming straight back that's not necessarily his fault i think if there's anything he has to improve in it's that but there's not much you can do when you've got your defenders your three defenders under pressure by four or five attacking players it really isn't much they're basically saying to you kick the ball long yeah, because if you play it out, you're just going to get under pressure. But great save uh, late on from Shane Long's volley. I thought that was going in, to be honest. And it was a fantastic. He made another save as well earlier on in the game with that. And also when he replaced Leno against Brighton, he also pulled off two or three good saves there. So look, we've been waiting for him to have his chance. To me, he gets a seven today. Bellerin, Larder guard. Bellerin gets a four out of ten. Bellerin struggled to keep hold of the ball, um, just constantly gifting Southampton the ball away, couldn't add anything, didn't support Pepe, Pepe was on an island today just doing nothing because he's still not getting that support from Bellerin, um, Bellerin just hasn't impressed me at all this season.
yeah he gets a four and uh, you know losing a ball in your own half is just something you can't do remember i talked about us cutting mistakes out you can't be successful if your team that's making plentiful errors that's leading to goals mustafi again something he's known for which is his poor positioning we saw that today as well and um you know what what can you say i think he improved as the game went on um but as I said, guys, another reckless challenge from him earlier on, which produced a, a yellow card. He's really got to stamp that out of his game because who would have known? All it takes is one silly mistake later on in a game and that's a red card, two, two yellows and you're off. So let's get to our man of the match, Rob Holden. Excellent positioning. Always muscled himself into the box to push in front of forwards and get some headed clearances. Didn't feel overwhelmed by the situation as well. I made the statement that he played really well against Brighton. He didn't. He wasn't a fault for any of the goals and he followed that up today with a solid performance. This is what we've been looking for for him. He was our best defender under Unai Emery's 22 game unbeaten run. Although he only played for 16 of those games, we won 11 straight. Yeah. So Rob Holden, if he can get back to that form, then for me, I have to put him in as a lock, as a defender. I have to put him before... Mustafi before David Luiz because I do believe and I've been saying that to you lot from time I call him the truth and big shout out to Rob Holder's agent as well I call him the truth because I feel that and I said this from long time when he came from bottom I said he's got the ability to be another Arsenal great a centre-back you know along the lines of the Keons and the Adams and whatever I said that he can anchor our line for 10 years for a decade and I just hope he gets back to that form. So for me, he gets an eight and a half. Um, just own the area in dangerous situations. Knew what to do. He was composed as well. That's something I kind of have put on a, a knock on him on. That he hasn't looked too composed. So for me, I give him eight and a half. Kieran Tenney gets a 6.5 for me out of 10. Kieran Tenney, I thought that he did well. Obviously, I said he placed that perfect weighted ball over to Abamian And really should have had something out of that uh, again excellent positioning he did well in the free at the back he was holding his own there that type of monreal position that he played today but then again looked assured in his passing looked good in possession as well that's what i've been impressed with him this season as well even against man city he just looks so composed on the ball just looks like he knows what he wants to do with the ball doesn't give away silly passes um bellerin yeah and uh, you just feel kind of like the ball is in a safer position with him. And I think Turney did really well. It's a shame that he had to end with a little calf strain. He was running a bit before that, so I hope it's not too too, too bad. Saka. Saka for me gets a 7.5 out of 10. Saka, um, <laughs> that, that mistimed run, you know, on, on the Eddie Nketiah's goal, the disallowed goal, he just slightly, well, not just because he was a yard offside, but had he had timed that right, that would have been a goal for Eddie Nketiah, so he could have had an assist. Also, as well, um, his fluid work in the middle of the park. I remember when me, Bertram, Tony, Ebony, African Guna did our first team sheet against Man City. And then we put the team sheet on one on one forums, and everyone was like, Saka playing in the middle? What are you talking about? That's where the man's been playing for the, the last three games. So, <laughs> yeah. Fool me once, yeah? Who says we don't know what we're talking about when it comes to football? Saka is meant to play in the middle because you're getting nothing from the middle of the park. You're getting no assists. You're getting no goals. You're getting nothing, yeah? One goal from the midfield has come from this season. You put a man like, in, uh, like Saka in there and all of a sudden the midfield looks more dynamic. And he definitely showed that today. Um, as I said, he even in the last minute of the game, he whipped in a cross for Lacazette and Lacazette just skimped it on a header and it went wide and that should have been a goal. He should have had a couple of assists today, but that just goes to show you how effective he is in, in this role. So for me, 7.5 out of 10 for Saka. Uh, Ceballos, lad, he looked so untidy, he looks un unreliable, constantly giving the ball away, just completely lost. I give him a 3. Yeah, I don't think Ceballos even wants to be here anymore and I don't even think we should actually be playing him right now if I'm honest I really don't I think that Joe Willock you saw what Joe Willock today done as confidence I've been really hard on him but that is the position he plays in the point uh, and I think that you as a pivot player I think you you got to put him in there in the midfield as the diamond 
Um, and I just think you've got to gain him experience. If, if he can move onwards from this goal today that he scored, I think it would. Is, guys, he's got four goals in the Europa. Yeah, and, and he can play, but he's he's just not been effective coming off the bench. I think we I think we start him, take out Ceballos and put Willock in, and I think you know, you might have something there. So guys, um, Xhaka, well Xhaka today was uh, a bit quiet. He was decent in possession, but as I said, I didn't really see those jaw dropping balls that split defenses. A uh, couple of times he got ran by. And um, but he did okay. His decision making was okay, and I didn't see him give the ball away, which is what he is renowned to be doing game after game after game. So for me, it was a bit of a tidy game for Xhaka today. So I give Xhaka a six. Now Pepe, I give Pepe a five. Very quiet today from Pepe. Um, he played through the middle in the first half, which is where Bertram wants to see him play, and he didn't really get that much support. Uh, he just didn't look. He looked disinterested today. So I don't know what that was all about. Maybe it's a bit of fatigue. Um, I don't really know to be honest. But he just didn't look himself. Quiet game today. I give him a five. Eden Aketia, I give him an eight. And if it weren't for Rob Holden, he would have been the man of the match. But just unlucky with the disallowed goal because he made a perfect run. That's what he does. He makes those runs in. I talk about this week after week, and it really looks bad on the guys who have been saying. He ain't a great player. You know, this guy can play. Been saying that all along. He's now got six goals in 11 starts with Arsenal and Leeds. Six goals in 11. So he's averaging more than a goal every two games. So remember when I said to you guys, he's a 20 goal a striker. He is. If you play him for 38 games in the, in the premiership, he'll get you 20 goals. I have no doubt about that. And guys, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. And I'll hold my hand up if it, if it doesn't happen. But Arteta's playing him for a reason. Today, he, he ran back and won the ball back two or three times in the midfield. How valuable is that to a, a set of midfielders? When they think, remember Thierry Henry used to do that. He used to run back and harass the midfielders and win the ball back. How, how, if you're his teammates and you see your striker doing that, the, goal, the streets is paved in gold. Because if you're doing that, you know, forget the fact that you can control the ball really well in the box, which he does. We saw that when the ball was up in the air and he muscled the defender. He played it sideways and then went on and uh, and obviously a defender made a key block there. But then again, the goal was something that he deserves. He works hard. When you work hard, guys, you get your due diligence. And he did. I mean, today he was fantastic. He gets an eight. And again, another good game for him. And this is why I've been saying along, he's undroppable. You can't drop the guy because he's given you that every game. I don't think there's a game he's played in which I've rated him under seven. I really don't because he gives you that high intensity kind of push up front and he plays defense. He drops back and he makes himself accountable to the team on both sides of the ball. Quality. So guys, Abamian, a bit better today. Seven, I give him a seven. A little bit reminiscent of what the, the start of the Brighton game was, but he showed more effort. And he ran harder, and he could have had a couple assists today as well. He was very unselfish, you know. T twice he played the ball out, hit the crossbar, and put the ball across the line. There was one time when he squared it to Eddie, and a defender made a great play on it. And he's just thinking more about his all-round game. And he too ran back and made himself accountable on the defensive end. So today he gets a seven, much better game, much better from him. And although this is his longest goal drought since two thousand and fourteen. It'll come. If he plays like this today against Sheffield and the other games and th that we're playing, Norwich, etc., the goals will come. And guys, Joe Willock, Joe Willock, I give a six. And I thought that Willock, as I said, uh, just in a key position to score goals. And guys, he does score goals. That's what he does. And we're lacking goals from the midfield. So I think that you give this guy a chance and see what he's made of. What have you got to lose? Yeah? What have you got to lose? You don't have anything to lose. Sure, the team might not make Europe. I mean, Arteta came out today and said that he thinks that they still have a chance to make the well, Europa or whatever he's saying. And if the boss feels that, then he feels that. But at the same time, he's got to believe in his team, and he does. And it's good to see the team bounce back. And as I said, I only had them at two points after the first three games, and they've got three points now. So they've got more points than I thought that they would have. But now's the time to really go on a, a, on, on a run. You've had three games on the road, 
you're going to Sheffield on the road in the FA Cup as well. That's four games on the road before you even go back to the Emirates. So listen, I think this is a perfect time and Sheffield ain't really playing well at this point. So I think you go there, you turn them over and and then you kind of put a run together. So that's it from me, guys. Let me know what you think about the grades. I want to hear from you guys in the comment section below and then peace out, man. Right back at you. Nice one.